Hey guys, in this care plan, we will explore asthma. So in this asthma care plan, we will talk about the desired outcome, the subjective and objective data, along with the nursing interventions and rationales. So asthma consists of bronchoconstriction. We're gonna draw our lungs here. So we have our bronchioles. So bronchoconstriction, inflammation, an increased mucus production, which is gonna narrow the passageways for that air to get through and decreases the ability to bring air into the alveoli, which decreases the amount of oxygenation that the red blood cells are able to exchange. So swelling and mucus aggregated from irritants or triggers are what causes this difficulty in breathing, wheezing, and hypoxia. So triggers include dust, pollen, smoke, infections. Asthma can also be genetic, environmental, triggered by exercise, or even because of allergies. So our desired outcome is we want this patient to have a decreased work in their breathing, adequate ventilation, and oxygenation, and perfusion of oxygen-rich blood to the tissues. So let's take a look at our care plan for asthma, starting with the subjective data. So our, our patient might feel really short of breath um, because of that lack of oxygen. They might experience some chest pain, um, tightness because of those bronchioles constricting and from all the coughing. Now let's look at our objective data. So you might observe your patient coughing because of those bronchial spasming. They might be breathing really fast or have that pursed lip breathing or even kind of sit in like a tripod position where they're trying to open up their lungs more. The bronchial constrictions can cause wheezing and you might even hear it without even using your stethoscope. It might be super loud. The patient's pulse ox will probably be low because of that lack of oxygen. Now let's take a look at the nursing interventions for asthma. So you should check the patient's pulse oximetry to determine if the patient is receiving enough oxygen. You might want to put them on a continuous pulse ox device so you can monitor the oxygen levels continuously. If the oxygen level is less than 90%, go ahead and put them on two liters of oxygen on the nasal cannula. You might have to increase as appropriate, but keeping the patient at higher levels can be harmful to the patient if they don't really need it. So next you want to listen to the patient's lung sounds. This is so that you can listen for any signs of needing an intervention. Um, for example, if they're having some wheezing, they might need a bronchodilator. If you're hearing some crackles or ronchi, they might have pneumonia and they potentially could use some suctioning. Something important to remember is that just because that wheeze goes away doesn't necessarily mean that the patient's getting better. It could mean that that airway has gotten even tighter, meaning that no air is really getting through there. So that's why you're not hearing the wheeze. So just make sure you always check the pulse ox. Next, you wanna make sure you educate your patient about triggers. Remember, there's many things that can be triggering this asthma. So just try to figure out what they are and help them decide how they can avoid these triggers, especially in their homes, in their lives. So it's super helpful to position your patient upright. It just helps to open up their lung bases and airway so that they can breathe better. Have your patient perform a peak flow monitor. This is gonna help to show how much air the patient can exhale. The smaller the number, the less air that the patient's moving. You'll administer breathing treatments and medications as appropriate to help to dilate the bronchioles and decrease inflammation. So beta agonists, such as albuterol, are used to help open up those lungs. Anticholinergics, such as ipatropium, is going to help to relax those bronchospasms. Corticosteroids, such as flucodazone, are going to help to decrease the inflammation in the lungs. Guys, make sure you keep communication open between you and that respiratory therapist, okay? They have a big part in this too, right? Um, especially when your patient starts to go downhill and struggle with their breathing, which hopefully doesn't happen. Make sure that crash cart is nearby if things take a negative turn so that you're prepared. If the patient does stop breathing or the airway closes, they may need to be intubated. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, 
Happy nursing.